though, than that, which is a technical matter, uh, one of those little technical matters that takes five years to work out. Uh, uh, more, uh, more important than that, the relationship once established in an international gold standard between the currencies of these uh, various countries uh, would, could not remain constant, could not remain constant over time unless the countries were content to take what came from that new international relationship that was set. Inflation, if there's a large inflow of the gold standard monetary base into the country, or depression if the gold happens to run out of the country as people lose, uh, uh, as, uh, as, as people lose confidence in the country. Now, it seems to me highly unlikely <clears throat> in today's world, and I'm simply speaking practicalities to you, it seems to me highly unlikely that the countries of the world as we know them today would be content to take what would come in the way of either inflation, which might be our experience, or deflation, which might be the experience of a good many uh, other countries in the world. Therefore, uh, it seems to me that sooner or later, as it has in the past, the international gold standard would break down. I'm inclined to think it would be much sooner rather than much later in today's environment. My third point is to say, well, uh, and, and I, I think it has been proposed in one of the, uh, uh, one of the uh, points of view of discussion in the Gold Commission was, uh, well, if that's so, we'll have to go it alone. Now, if we were to go it alone, which is conceivable because we as a, as a society can control our own destiny uh, by, uh, uh, by making clear that that's what we wish uh, our elected congressmen, such as Congressman Paul, uh, to be for, uh, if, uh, if we were to go it alone, there would be operational problems that would bother me since I might have something to do with the management of the system uh, that would result. In the first place, we would need to set the price. Uh, initially, the price would have to be something that seems to me that would uh, lead neither to a large inflow nor to a large outflow of gold. That's a hard technical problem to decide what that price is. Uh, it isn't just reading off uh, the gold price today of $383 an ounce. Uh, it's got to be something that will take into account the change in the circumstances, uh, circumstances of the United States currency on the attitude of holders of gold versus gold money uh, to come. Uh, in the United States, and there would be some figure different than 383. Uh, it would probably be a good deal lower than 383. Uh, in any event, uh, it would have to be set some way so that we would not immediately experience a big inflow from gold holders around the world, or we would immediately be faced uh, by this inflation that would destroy the system uh, almost immediately. Uh, and. Uh, and on the other hand, we, of course, wouldn't want to lose all our gold in the next, uh, in the next 30 or 60 or 90 days because that would destroy the, system, the, uh, the experiment, too. You would have to stop. <laughs> if you had no more gold, you could not have a gold standard, and therefore you would have to stop the, uh, uh, the experiment. Uh, second, uh, so we'd have to find the price. Second, we would uh, need to be prepared to accept shocks uh, that originate abroad. Uh, in a system where we alone are the gold standard country. Uh, gold discoveries or industrial absorptions from new developments and new inventions, new uses of gold, speculative movements and hostage movements and fugitive movements of gold that might come in uh, to the country or might go out, uh, politically motivated strategies affecting the gold market by countries such as Russia uh, or China uh, would all be kinds of uh, shocks that we would have to be prepared to take. Uh, sometimes, perhaps often, certainly in today's environment, uh, the net tendency would be for the gold to come here, just as we've had a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, money uh, that has, uh, in dollar terms, that has flowed into the United States in the last couple of years as a haven country. But there would be other times when the gold would go out. 
Remember now, in a gold standard, we're talking about a fixed link between the supply of domestic money and, the, and what is available locally, that is, within the country, in terms of gold. You either do it, if it's a pure gold standard, with, by, by, by uh, coining all of the gold that comes in, or if it's a, or if it's a uh, uh, gold, uh, gold uh, 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 agency standard by printing gold certificates, as we did before, or by having some fixed ratio between the total amount of circulating media uh, and, the, uh, and the amount of gold that is on hand. In any event, there would be a direct relationship between what happened in terms of the inflows and outflows of gold resulting from what knows kind of a development uh, that occurred uh, abroad, uh, and that would have a directly inflationary or deflationary effect on the United States economy. Now, and I think that would be a very high price to pay, and I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in a position to recommend that we take the risk. The uh, fourth uh, point I would make is that a managed monetary system, uh, which we have, which we've had uh, more or less continuously since at least 1863 uh, in the United States, a managed monetary system suffers from the disability of being affected by the political process. I, I rather resent Congressman Paul's suggestion that uh, uh, that uh, uh, the Federal Reserve responds to the uh, particularized demands of politicians who wish to get reelected. I don't think that's true. I've seen no evidence of that in the 20 years that I've spent at the board. But it is true that a politician will be elected. <laughs> It'll be Mr. Paul or the fellow who's run out against him. Uh, and politicians are interested in providing good conditions. Uh, for their constituencies, for, I think, obvious reasons. And therefore, I think it is true that in a democratic system, there is a tendency to want to err on the side of liberality. Sometimes, maybe, you err a little more than at other times. Sometimes you go through moods in an economy uh, where the greatest thing that the people want to get rid of is unemployment or where they become concerned about inflation, and one can change the mix a little bit. But it is, in a small p sense, a political system when you have a managed uh, monetary system. Uh, my question is whether it would be any different when it comes to the big decision if you had a gold standard system. It seems to me that if the effect of the gold standard system were sufficiently unfavorable for the populace of the country, for the constituencies of these congressmen, that uh, the Congress would modify the gold standard system. Uh, therefore, when it comes to big uh, kinds of uh, crises that might occur uh, in the in the continuing fight that we have of trying to exert discipline on the social and economic and political process of the country and that process and its own desires, why, uh, it seems to me that when you got to that big crisis point, uh, if you had gold, you would simply change the gold standard. And we have numerous examples of that uh, in the uh, history of the United States in the history of other countries. And I have no reason to believe that our politicians or our public uh, have become so, uh, so uh, 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 far-seen in their vision uh, and what they want to see in the days and years and decades to come that they no longer would be inclined to change the system if it wasn't producing uh, what was wanted in the short run. So I'll end on that. Thank you very much. <clears throat>